Hello folks, this is GK and I have done this Mount Kerr Games case study previously few years back and uh, the case study has changed now. A lot of you guys have been asking me to make an updated video on the new case study. So I'm going to go over this and it will be definitely helpful for the exam because you're going to get maybe one or two questions or maybe more on as a architect how would you design certain solutions in the Google Cloud. And if you are watching this video from AWS background or Azure background, see how you can architect the same scenarios, you know, in AWS or Azure. So with that, I'll go through the case study. I'm gonna give you the important services that you have to remember so that it will save time during the exam. So Mount Kerr Games makes online session-based multiplayer games for mobile platforms. They have recently started expanding to other platforms after successful migrating their on-premises environments to cloud. So this is important thing to understand. So they have already migrated from on-premise to cloud. Their most recent endeavor is to create a retrofit FPS game that allows hundreds of simultaneous players to join a geo join a geo-specific digital arena from multiple platforms from multiple platforms and locations. This is another important keyword. A real-time digital banner will be displayed, will display a global leadership for all the top players across every active arena. Okay, so now let's understand the solution concept. Monker Games is building a new multiplayer game that they expect to be very popular. They plan to deploy the game's backend on GKE. So you'll get a couple of questions on GKE. For instance, if you are planning to deploy this game and it has to scale based on the traffic, what are the compute resources that you might use? For instance, are you going to use Google Compute Engine or would you use GKE? Um, and the obvious answer here would be GKE because I'm assuming that it has to be supported for multiple platforms as well. Containerized solution in the GKE would make sense. Or they might ask you like, if you have to scale, which one to choose, GCE auto scaling or GKE? Moving on, so they can scale rapidly and use Google Cloud load balancer. So again, another service to note is global load balancer, GLB. Here, the questions on this might be, the game is supported from different geographical locations. Okay, for example, the gamers are connecting and playing from uh, probably USA or Japan, you know, so different locations and they have to connect to the game servers and, uh, you know, play. So for that, you want to use GLB as a front end and then connect to GKE services. This will be one common question that, might, that you might uh, get in the exam. So in order to keep the global leader leaderboard in sync, they plan to use multi-region spanner cluster. Now previously in the last Mount Kerr Games case study, it was talked about the Cloud SQL, but now they're talking about multi-region spanner cluster because they want to support uh, a new game which is going to be you know, played from multiple regions and they want to have something that can be horizontally scalable. So for um, OLTP type of transactions, if you get any question in the exam and you see spanner, cloud spanner, then that would be the answer. And then existing technical environment. The existing environment was recently migrated, recently migrated to Google Cloud, which we have talked about. Then five games came across using lift and shift virtual machines migration with a few minor exceptions. So uh, when anybody talks about lift and shift, what this means is that they have migrated to any cloud, in this case GCP, by just copying the data from the on-premise or copying the exact architecture, you know, or without changing anything or without refactoring and moving to GCP. For instance, if they have, let's say, you know, most of these gaming companies might have a big monolith on on-prem with the app server 
and they would just copy the same thing to GCP. And more likely, and most likely, this will be on the VMs, you know, which is GCE. And each new game exists in an isolated Google Cloud project nested below a folder that maintains most of the permissions. You can see it is nested in a folder that maintains most of the permissions and network policies. So as you all know, um, you can either create org and then have projects, right? Project one, project two, or you can have um, a folder within org and then create projects here, right? So here they are saying that uh, they have put all the permissions at the folder level. Permissions meaning IAM permissions. So expect some questions around IAM in the terms of uh, principle of least privilege, which is if you have to give permission to um, any legacy games to the new games or um, how would you do that? Do you create a service account with broad permissions or what permi with specific permissions? Those kind of questions you might expect. I did not get that question in the exam, but you might get that. So prepare well uh, on the IAM for this scenario. And then the legacy games with low traffic have been consolidated into single project. So the legacy games are all part of one project itself, okay? And it is not clear whether that project is going to inherit the permissions of this folder. Let's say, you know, this is a new game, whether new game is going to have a different permissions versus legacy, existing in this project might just have permissions to this itself, the IAM different permissions. So this is not clear, but I'm assuming that since they have called it differently, the legacy project will have its own permissions. Now let's closely look at uh, business requirements. So support multiple gaming platforms. So here the important things to remember is use GKE to ensure consistency across different platforms. So support multiple regions. So here we can say deploy games in multiple regions, regions, you know, to reduce the latency. And then you're going to use, which is very important, Google Cloud Load Balancer to target specific region from wherever, you know, the closest uh, to the players from where they are coming in. If there are questions around uh, rapid iterations of game features, here there might be questions about the CICD process and uh, blue-green deployments. So now moving on to latency, it is again the CDN to cache and serve st uh, static content. It is similar to what we have discussed here. This is going to be very big. Um, here for this, you're going to talk about GKE for, uh, for dynamically scaling based on the traffic and load and use services like Cloud Spanner, again, for horizontal scaling of the databases. Okay, you'll be hearing more about GK and Cloud Spanner in the exam, not necessarily how to implement Cloud Spanner, but where to use Cloud Spanner and GK. And then there might be questions around uh, the PubSub as well, because that's also another managed service. I'm going to cover all the managed services that are important for this exam. So using use managed services, uh, this is a common thing in any cloud exams. As much as possible, if you get questions on whether you're going to use, they might throw in some third party vendor things in the exam options. You'll always go with the, like the managed services. For example, let's say the question is on, are you going to use PubSub versus Mong versus um, some third party messaging bus, then uh, you would go for PubSub option. Similarly, the GKE or all this stuff. If there are any questions on how to minimize the cost, the questions would be to use preemptable VMs for non-critical based workloads. For instance, uh, you have to set up a dev environment, 
GK dev environment and uh, you want to reduce the cost there, then you can use preemptible VMs. That might be one option they might ask you. And then uh, the questions would be how to monitor cost and do analysis on, the, on top of it. And then how to do analysis on top of cost. That, that might be one question. So there are, there are certain repetitive stuff that which I've covered previously. Dynamically scale based on the game activity. Again, you're going to use GKE and uh, uh, Cloud Spanner. And publish scoring data on real-time global dashboard. So this is going to be a very, very important stuff that you might get in the exam because we have covered about compute. We have covered about little bit about IAM. Um, but the main thing that you will be asked these days, because it's all AML days, is about analysis of the data. So what we're going to do is, this is pretty much in lines with whatever I have covered in the previous video a few years back. Nothing has changed as such. So let's say that there are multiple game servers. We're going to cover, we're going to get the data from the game servers and ingest that into PubSub. Okay, so this is the flow. And PubSub to data flow. These are all managed services to process the events and aggregate. Okay, so that, uh, that way the scores are updated in the near real time. Okay, now from the data flow, store the information into Cloud Spanner. From here, we can display the dashboard of rankings of players, etc., etc. So this is like massively important stuff that you have to remember in the exam. Okay, so remember this flow. Another important thing here to remember is whenever there is a word for analysis, they will ask you what is the backend database that you want to use. So here we're going to use BigQuery. Okay, and they will ask you, they might ask you questions on uh, which database to choose for what. I'm going to cover that soon. So if there is a question on use GPU processing to render graphics, uh, you might have to do some research on this. But most likely, they would ask question on use like GKAE, but you have to use GPU enabled nodes to process graphics. And support eventual migration of legacy legacy games to this new platform. Uh, you have to come up with a strategy of how would you do lift and shift, replatform, or refactoring. Use Google Cloud tools like Migrate for Compute Engine and database migration services for smooth transitioning. So these are the some of the things that that you might get in the exam for this this uh, technical requirement. So let's quickly go through the executive statement finally. So our last game was first time we used GCP and it was tremendous success. We were able to analyze players' behavior and game telemetry. So game telemetry is important, which I spoke about, in ways that we could never we could we never could before. This success allowed us to bet on full migration to cloud and start building all new games using cloud native design principles. New game is our most ambitious to date and will open up doors for us to support more gaming platforms beyond mobile. Latency is our top priority through cost management is the next important challenge. As with our first cloud-based game, we have grown to expect the cloud to enable advanced analytical capabilities, analytics capabilities, and so we can rapidly iterate on our deployments of bug fixes and new functionality. As we have discussed through the case study, now let's go through the services that you might be asked in the exam. The first service is GKE, and the questions would be around uh, what compute service to use, and then PubSub, and then there might be questions on storing the logs inside the cloud storage. So here you have to say, I'm going to use GSUtil, use uh, parallel uploads, to store it in the cloud storage. And then Cloud Spanner, for sure, which is already discussed in the 
in this document itself. They will not say in the question whether they're going to use Cloud Spanner. They're going to say which you know, uh, scalable data database that you're going to use to show in the leadership board. And then the data flow. OK, finally, BigQuery. And then global load balancer. So these are the services that you will see in the exam. And there might be a couple of scenarios of uh, how would you um, debug if there are issues that have happened. So you will obviously use your debugging skills to check the logs, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, what will happen, how will you roll out, roll back. Uh, that is another important thing to consider. If there is a question on uh, what database to use for time series, time series, then you can say big table. And if uh, these are some of the hints that you might you have to remember, if there is a question on analysis of data, then talk about PQ, safely select that option. And if there is a question on the leadership board or storing the data, then you can talk about Cloud Spanner. This is for the actual game data. Okay, that will be used. If there is a question on the telemetry, the data that gets fed into PubSub, from PubSub it will go to data flow, and from data flow we can feed into BQ for analysis. This is a standard, you know, pattern that you will see in uh, multiple clouds and multiple exam so you can remember this only services will change whether it is aws or gcp or azure the assumption here i had is that the legacy games and the new games are both in the gcp but if ever there is a question that the legacy is running on on prem okay and the new games are running inside GCP. And uh, how would you give access from on-prem to GCP? Through IAM, then you have to say workload identity, Oops, sorry, federation. So I've covered that in a video. Please go through that video. You will see in my uh, GCP series. So this is very important. And then there might be a couple of questions on IAM itself on uh, how would you give access from legacy to new with the service account. Again, if the legacy is on-prem, the questions might be on uh, how would you transfer the logs from uh, legacy to GCP or how would you save the logs from on-premise servers to GCP Google Cloud Storage. You can talk about GSUtil there to store the logs in the Cloud Storage. And another pattern we talked about is global load balancer to support multiple regions and then the game servers in GKE. Okay, this is for uh, to support multiple regions. I think that's about it as far as Mount Kirk Games case study is concerned. If I have missed anything, uh, please let me know in the comment section. And if you find this useful, please do let me know and share it with your friends whoever, whoever is taking the exam. And um, yeah, share your uh, exam success here and then any other things that I have to cover with respect to the Professional Cloud Architect exam. Thank you all for watching this video and, uh, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and click on bell so that you will get notified whenever I'm creating a new video. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.